Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to select all of the text in a text box when you click on it. Why would you want to do that? Well, I'm going to explain it right now. Today's question comes from Gabriel in Plano, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Gabriel says, when I click on a cell in Microsoft Excel, the entire cell is selected. And if I want to overwrite that, I just begin typing. In Microsoft Access, when I click on a field, the cursor goes wherever I click, which could be in the middle of the data or at the end or wherever. Is there a way that I can make it so that when I click on a field on a form, all of the data in that field is selected so I can just type over it instead of having to manually select it with the mouse? It works fine if I tab to it, but I use the mouse more than I tab around the form. I just want to click and type. I understand completely, Gabriel. In fact, this is a feature that I built into my account balances template. Normally in Access, when you click on a cell, right, your cursor goes wherever you click. So if you click here, that's where the cursor goes, right? And if you just want to be able to click and type, it's a bit of a pain because you have to come over here. You have to click and select all that text or maybe, you know, tab off it and tab back to it. Okay. So what I added was a feature where when you click on the cell, it just selects all the text in that cell, right? Click here, it selects all the text in the cell, right? That's how Excel behaves. If I click here and type in, you know, Smith, it just overwrites the cell. So how can we do that in Access? Well, it's going to require a little teeny tiny bit of programming, but a whole lot of understanding. There's only a couple lines of code, but you got to understand a lot about what I'm going to show you first. So some prerequisites. Obviously, if you've never done any VBA programming before, now would be a good time to go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. So go watch that first. I also strongly recommend you watch my create a function video. We're going to make our own little custom function so that we don't have to repeat the same code for all the different controls, right? You got first name, last name, whatever. If you want the same behavior in a bunch of them, we're going to make our own function to do that. And we can call that function from multiple different control. So go watch this video and go watch this video on event handler functions. We're going to put a function right in the property of the event, right? Right in there. So we don't have to make multiple calls to it. And of course, go watch this video on string functions. We're going to use the length function in this video. So go watch all of these and then come on back. They're free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and I'll see you. I'll, I'll, I'll hold up class just for you. Go watch them. Go on. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help Free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. So the issue is if I click somewhere like here and I want to just, you know, type in that value, right? I got to click on it and then, okay, grab my mouse and then select it. It's just a pain. I want to just be able to click and have it select the whole thing. So what we have to do is we have to tell Access, okay, in the on click event for this field, I want you to move the cursor to the beginning, right there. And then you're, and then tell, tell the code, say you select all that text. Okay. So how do we move the cursor to the beginning of the field? Well, that's changing something called the cell start property. So let's just do it for first name. So right click design view, click on first name, go to the on click event. All right. Cause you don't need it if you're tabbing around, right? So we don't have to put it in like the on got focus because if you tab to it, it automatically selects all the text. All right. So right here, dot, dot, dot. All right, so I want to say move the cursor to the beginning. Okay, so it's going to be first name dot cell start equals zero is before the first character. All right, save it, come back out here. Let's close it and open it. And now if I click anywhere like here, boom, it just moves the cursor to the beginning. See that? All right, click off of it, click on it. If I click at the end, boom, moves the cursor to the beginning. What if I say cell start equals two. Well, what happens is click off it, click back on it. Boom. It moves it right after the second character. See that? Okay. So let's put that back to zero. All right. That's before the first character. Now I want to set the number of characters that are selected to be the whole thing. Let's say I want to select the first four characters. I can say first name dot cell length. See it? There it is. Cell length. Let's say equals four. Okay, watch what happens now. Click and then click and it selects the first four 
characters. See that? Well, what if you want to select all the characters in there? Well, then we can go, oops, someone's beaming in. So we know how many characters are in there with the length property, right? So I can come over here and I can say, give me the length of first name like that. All right. So if I click off it and then click back on it again, look at that. It selects all of them. Isn't that cute? All right. Click off it, click back on it anywhere in here and it selects the whole thing. And now I can just type right over the top of it, which is exactly what he wants. All right, so that's the cell start and cell length properties. Now, I want to be able to apply this to multiple fields in here, not necessarily just first name. I want pretty much every text box in here to have that. So I don't want to have to make, you know, repeat this code everywhere. I want to make my own little function, okay, and put it out here. I'm going to make an event handler function so I can just, you know, whatever the active control is, it handles it. All right, so let's make a function. We're gonna make it a function because to make it a, an event handler function, it has to be a function, right? So let's call it a public function because later on we'll move it to a global module and then it'll work for any form, right? Let's call it sell all, select all, okay? You're not taking any values in, you're not returning anything back, but you gotta be a function, all right? Now, how do we get the current control that the user is working with? Well, that's screen.activeControl, all right? So it's screen, why screen? I don't know, that's just the way the Microsoft people did it. Screen dot, there it is, active control, dot cell start equals zero, right? Then screen.activeControl dot cell length equals the length of screen dot active control dot value. Yes, I know some of you are no, no, or some of you already know where I'm going with this. Okay, so instead of first name click now, we're gonna get rid of that. And now we can call sell all as an event handler function, all right? I can come back over here and I can go to design view. I can click on you, bring up your properties and in on click, I can say equals sell all just like that, all right? I'll zoom in so you can see it better. That's equals sell all. Okay. And the beautiful thing about doing it this way is I can select multiple fields. Watch this. Click, right? Hold the shift key down. Click, click whatever field you want to have this property. All right. Pick them all. And then in the on click event right there, go boop, paste. Put the equal sign in front of them. And now they all have that as their on click event. See? See? It's the easiest way to do it. And you got one block of code in here for it. You know, got 500 different events. All right, let's save it, close it, close it, open it. Now watch, anytime I click on any of these fields, it selects all of the text inside that field. Isn't that just lovely? Oh, wait, what, what happened? What happened there? And like I said, some of you already know where I'm going with this. All right, what I showed you works perfectly fine with just text because in a text field, the actual text in the box is exactly equal to the same text that's in the field. But with numeric and date values, for example, well, date, sometimes it works just right, depending on your format. And numbers, it usually works fine. But something like a currency value, it's got formatting in there. The actual value in that credit limit field is just 5000, right? It doesn't have the dot zero zero, doesn't have the dollar sign. So what we have to use instead of the value property is we have to use the dot text property. And I've covered this in a couple of different videos, but the dot text property gives you the actual text in the box, not the value in the underlying field. They're usually the same, but it takes formatting into consideration. So come back out meow, and change dot value to dot text. And those of you who caught that as I was doing, see, sometimes I put stuff like this in the videos just to teach you things. And those of you who already caught that before I did it, you give you get a lollipop. Okay. All right. So now it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Look at that. It worked down here because it's based on the text in there and not the, the value of the field. And that's it. That's all. That's how you do it. See, it's just two lines of code, but you got to know where to put the two lines of code. And this makes it easy knowing the event procedures and blah, 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 blah. And furthermore, we're going to take this now and cut that out. We're gonna go over here and put it in my global module. 
And I'll drop this in the code vault too for you guys, for the, for the gold members. See now any form can use sell all, right? I can come out here. Let's say you wanna do it on your customer list as well, right? Come in here, design view, select everybody, open up their properties, right click properties, on click equals sell all. Save it, close it, and now boom, 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 boom. Look at that. That easy. See, you gotta learn some VBA, folks. Hang out with me. I'll teach you more cool stuff. Wanna learn lots of cool stuff? I got lots of cool stuff on my website. I got 40 plus developer lessons. Hours and hours and hours of us hanging out and having fun programming and learning access. So if you like this stuff, check it out. I'll put a link down below. But that's gonna do it, folks. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Hope you had some fun too. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube.
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.